My, 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 my. It is such a wonderful joy to be here in Orlando from the fabulous city of Detroit, Michigan. I'm so honored to be here with you. I must tell you, it felt good, you know, to come off the airport and see this wonderful, wonderful, fantastic place. And you look lovely today. Let me share something with you because I greet you with divine love from Detroit Unity Temple, your sister church in Detroit. And right now, it's such a wonderful time to be involved with unity because we have a great opportunity to change the world. Do you feel like being a part of that segment, that type of energy that changes the world? Then we got to uplift our energy. We have to uplift our temple. We have to be a part of something great. Do you feel like being a part of something great? Yes. I'm telling you, I'm excited about life right now because if you're ready for it, life will give you all that you want to give. And before I begin, I'm going to have to just take a moment and just say, that for those who may not know me, I've been in Unity since 2000. I served on the Unity Village Board. I had a chance to, village, to visit Africa. And just a bit of note, you may not know that in, in 1934, there was close to 34 Unity churches in Nigeria. Many may not have known that, but Charles Fillmore was broadcasting, doing a ham radio bit, and the information was traveling all over the world. And two Methodist ministers in Nigeria, a place called Ohafia, was listening to this and said, who is this man speaking of truth? Who is this man? And they traveled to the United States to meet Charles Fillmore. And they had a conference with him, and they said, we like this stuff. And they took it back to Nigeria. And in that time period, within a matter of three years, they had went from just one church to close to 40 churches and centers. It caused such a ripple that the traditional churches began to burn down the unity churches in Nigeria, and they had to go into the woods and have service there. When I went over there in 2003, it was so fantastic because I went to the village of Ohafia, and there in the village, I had someone knock on my door at 6 o'clock in the morning, and they said, come, Reverend, come with us. And I went there, and the chief was reading the daily word, and all the children and villagers were sitting there listening to the daily word. And that's how they began their day each morning in this village of Ohafia. Sometimes we don't realize how blessed we are to know this truth, to know this awareness, this greatness that God has given us through these wonderful divine avatars who came before us. Right now I'm on a quest to let us realize that there's a shift taking place in the world today. We're moving from the idea of a religious denomination into a platform of spirituality. As individuals are seeking to go within themselves, to find and to discover something rich that was placed there centuries and centuries ago. And it's up to us to discover it, to move forward, just as the Nigerians did when they discovered it. You see, many of us don't realize that we are the ones they have been waiting for. We are the ones that they've been talking about. So as I go through this talk, and the title of this talk is going to be called, Will, the Executive Vibration, the Christ Impulse of Change. Because we're going to look at it at a metaphysical level as well as a vibrational level, a vibrational frequency, because I contend, like Charles Fillmore, that the world is made up of vibrations and energy. And when we begin to discover that, but the challenge is the fact that we get stuck in our head. But before I begin, I have to take a moment to become centered. And I have to give honor to God, who's the head of my life. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths, and lead me in thy truth, and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. And for this I say, thank you, God. As you know, in unity every month, we celebrate one of the faculties and the power of the month. And the power for this month, whether you know it or not, this month is represented by the disciple Matthew, and he represents the decision-making part of the brain, but the coordinating color is silver, and the physical location is in the center of the brain. Now, I'd like for you to use the cheat sheet right behind me. And the spiritual power for this month is? You did it right. <laughs> y'all come on, y'all catch up on this. The spiritual power for the month is? 
Oh, yeah, if I was in my class, good Lord, I'd be saying, no, nah, wait a minute now. This is going to have to be some energy that flows with me, all right? If I bring my energy, you bring your energy as well. The spiritual power for this month is? Will. And the disciple is? Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I want you to repeat the affirmation with me. I choose my good based on spiritual understanding. Let's say that together. I choose my good based on spiritual understanding. And I'm telling you that it's so important because it's interesting because sometimes we take for granted the 12 powers. It's amazing. I have what is called an African American Heritage Bible Dictionary. Bible. And it was King James Version. Can you believe that? But there in that original version, do you believe that the 12 powers are located there? And so whenever I go to a ministerial alliance in Detroit, and I have all my colleagues and my brothers sitting around me, they said, Reverend Guys, uh, you hear you from unity. I said, I am. They said, what are you going to talk about? I said, I'm going to talk about the 12 powers. And they said, well, how do you know these 12 powers existed? I pull out my King James Version of the Bible, <laughs> African Heritage Edition, and I open it up. And I said, can you read that right there? And they'll start reading the 12 powers. I said, enough said. And I handed it to them. I said, look back. But see, we don't understand that the 12 powers are much more than just reading it as a cognitive road experience. The 12 powers are something magnificent. It's like tuning a car. It's like when you understand the working of our spiritual foundation. Because in order for us to go forward, we have to recognize how these powers operate within us. And when we talk about the idea of will, but I'm just going to go to this one thought. It says, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Will is that executive quality, faculty that is necessary for us to go on. It's the executive faculty of the mind, the determining factor of man, and what man's will or decree comes to pass in his experience. And thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. Now, many of us don't realize how important that is. The words you speak, whatever you take into your heart, will manifest itself in your life. So often, many of us go around not knowing when we say, I am poor, I'm lacking this. What are you saying? Do you know that there's a vibrational frequency that actually has to go out and manifest what you say? Because there's a God within us that has to prove and be proven the words we speak. And we wonder why lives don't change because you need to think about what you're saying in this world today. You need to think about what's taking place. And now let's look at that. It says that this particular faculty, the wheel, is at the center of the mind and brain and around which we revolves all the activity that constitutes consciousness. It is the avenue through which the I am expresses potentiality. How many of us realize that we're not just these, this cloth, this body we have? How many of us in this room truly today see ourselves as the divine presence of God? Raise your hand. How many of us, these people doing like this, let me, let me cut through the chase. You are indeed a divine reflection of the Christ. There's nothing less about you. No one can make you become little but yourself. And when you recognize the quality of the Christ that exists within us, you have the power to change the world. But you've been told over the years, as we have dummied down, that very existence of the God within us. We've allowed it to be lowered by others and our own conscious awareness, the lack of truth, of knowledge of knowing who we are. For 2,000 years, we've been playing that we don't know who we are. And yet, do you realize you've been here from the very beginning of time, from dawn itself? You are made and you were chosen by God for this particular purpose right now in this world. I got to go on because, see, this particular part that I'm talking about today, this executive vibration is so important because I just want to share with you your 12 powers and most of us have read the 12 powers right you're correct with me right <laughs> okay when we talk about the 12 powers you know faith starts first correct and that's in general within its strength it's wisdom it's love power imagination understanding and finally will come in now I got to share this with you will and faith are both located in the center of the brain. Both of these are located in the exact same aspect. You may say, well, what's important? But I guarantee you this. In order to move forward in your life, you have to have the faith to do anything. If you look at our world today, we're lacking faith in each other. 
You have to have the strength, internal strength, the spiritual strength. You have to have the wisdom, the love, the power, imagination, but understanding. But then there comes that point. Do you have the ability to make the decision? The will. Many of us stay stuck in our life. Many of us don't understand if we want to change something in our life, we lack the willpower. We lack the ability to make a decision to get out the rut that we're in. We're caught in a vice that traps us right now. We go around complaining, woe is my life. We fail to realize in this idea of separation from that presence of God within ourselves. But all we ever had to do was make a decision to say yes to that divine principle. The lack of willpower in this world is the root of our problems today. The lack of the ability to get out or to make a decision. How many people you know are stuck right there? They know what to do. They know what they should read. They know what they should say, but they're stuck there. And we should begin to question what has happened to us in this intellectual age, this age of technology. And yet we fail to be able to turn a switch to make a decision to say yes to God. Why is that? I contend that by training, I am a psychotherapist. By training, I, before becoming a minister, I studied the workings of the brain and the energy around the brain itself. And I began to realize that we have been so conditioned to what I'm going to term depression. The world is suffering with depression right now. We've been overstimulated with issues. We've been trapped in situations that we fail to realize how to break that yoke of depression. How many people you know right now is overly depressed or going through major depressive energy? How many of us know someone like that? Many of us in this very room may still feel it inside of ourselves. As a therapist, they would say that in across the nation, one out of eight individuals suffering with major depressive episodes. We look at it from a therapeutic situation. We look at it from a medication situation. We look at it from all these things that to do it, but we don't get to the root of where that depression lies or what is causing that depression. I contend that when you are in separation from your divine self, when you are in separation from that vibrational energy, when you are in separation from the truth of who you are, you have a difficult chance and an overwhelming fact because you feel hopeless you feel helpless, and you feel like you want to just give up. Our youth are experiencing it more than ever before. Our elders are experiencing it more than ever before. And so what does this have to do with the word will? When there's a lack of will in a person, when there's an inability to change their life or to move, it comes with the lack of will. And you can feel it, can't you? You can see it in a person. You ever saw a person who don't have will? They're hunched over. Their face sags in. You can see it. There's a vibrational energy that comes from them. And it's a very low vibrational frequency that takes on their continents, their, their residence. You follow what I'm saying? This, this challenge that we have right now is not just with individuals. It's a collective consciousness with people. Have you ever went into a community? Look at the world today. We've given up. We're allowing politicians to make decisions for us regardless of what they may choose to do. The inability for people to be able to reason with one another. The inability for us to be able to see each other in the true light of the Christ presence within us. We somewhere along the way have lost, have failed to understand the divinity of who we are. Will, the executive faculty, the executive vibration that I call is necessary. That vibration that exists within us is that when you have a strong vibrational frequency in you, and this is where spirituality is going. Hear me out. We will soon begin to speak about spirituality in the talk and relationship of vibrations. If you have a high vibration, you have a, you'll find that that person have a very strong spiritual relationship with themselves. Is that true? And the person with very low, low, low vibration. They sometimes don't even know where they're going in life. And they substitute 
medication, drugs, and everything else to try to boost their vibration. But they fail to catch on to that requirement necessary for their foundation of who they are. Today, the world is suffering from the lack of willpower. Look at our cities. People don't want to change it. They want to exist in poverty. They stay in a welfare mentality. You think God wanted us to be trapped in a welfare mentality? You think God wanted us to be here talking about we don't know what to do? You think God wanted us to sit back and allow the failure of a society in this day and age to talk regardless of the religious differences? How can our lack of willpower or willingness, how can whether a person is from a Palestinian community and a Jewish community not have the will to see that we are all one together. How can that exist today? How can that lack of will for the love of humanity fail to see that you cannot continuously kill children over religious differences? Where is that being lost at? When that vibrational frequency is not being taught, or when the true teachings of our oneness with one another. Think about where we are as a society today. We fail to understand the truth of who we are. We are indeed children of God. I want us to go on. I want you to just to look at this with me for a moment. And before I, I get here, I got to tell you a story. But I'm, I want you to read this up here with me. It says... You are needed to reach the level of Christ to transform your earth and all of humanity. When you don't click that switch, will, when you don't recognize the power of will, the next power after will is called order. When there's no will, there can be no order in your life. Have you ever walked to somebody's house and they don't have no willpower? How do their house look? Would you say it again? When they don't have, when they'll tell you, I just didn't have the will to clean my house. Am I right? Now, that's an individual. When you look at a community, you see it there. When you look at a country, you will see it there. When there's no willpower, there's no order in a person's life. And that's why the 12 powers are in alignment to that aspect. It says, but we are needed. I'm not going to say you. We are needed to reach this level of Christhood to transform your earth and all of humanity. That level of Christhood can only be reached through a vibrational level. When we raise the vibrational frequency, and if those who come today, I'm going to demonstrate the power of prayer that you can visually see. I'm going to demonstrate of how vibrations impact those around you. And it won't just be in words. I will give a living demonstration of that this afternoon. In the moment that there are enough of you, of us, fully activated. The whole earth will come into an alignment with the higher forces. And you will merge with the cosmos and the experience of oneness. The separation will dissolve and you will walk side by side with the masters. I want you to think about that for a moment. We believe that we are just human beings. We believe this is all it is. But when this body dissolves, you will still be there. The I am within you is to be there. And we have to have the responsibility to know that we were called here. We were called here. We were called here to change the world. To maintain it in its highest frequency. Jesus came not so that we would put him on a cross and worship him. He came to demonstrate how to lift his vibration. And trust me on this. His ability to walk on water was not magic. He understood the relationship of the vibrational frequency between the water and himself. And he was able to meet it and control his vibrational energy where it was like oneness that took place. And he was able to walk on the water. When he was able to bring Lazarus from the grave, it wasn't about some magical words. It's that he understood the vocal frequency that could begin to control and to change the molecular structure. To realign it in the way he spoke it. He was able to bring it forward and to change a person's embodiment of truth. Are you following with me? You see, 
we have to begin to gather ourselves to change the world. I want to tell you a story. Have you ever, ever heard of Gail Devers before? You may have noticed her as a track star. And when you saw her, she was noted because she had these long fingernails. And they curled around, and she ran track. And you was probably wondering, how did she tie her shoes? In 1988, she was preparing for the Olympics in Seoul. And she didn't realize she became sick. Her weight had dropped down to close to 87 pounds. And she didn't understand what was going on. She lost in the semifinals. In 1990, she discovered she was, they said that she had Graves' disease, a disease that affected her entirely, thyroids. She was so taken by this illness that her hair started falling out. Patches of her skin started falling away. She began to become so disgusted, so depressed, that she tried to lock herself in. She covered all her mirrors because she didn't want to see herself. And one time she had to go to the store, and a little girl looked up at her and said, Mommy, is that a monster? Now, this is the same Gail Devers that we know of, track star from Seattle. She went home so depressed. She lost the ability of her walk. Her feet swollen up, was so swollen that she couldn't put on shoes. She had to crawl. Finally, one of her friends came over to her house. She had locked herself in and it carried her to the hospital. She didn't want to take the beta medicine, the beta blockers, because the track, the IAAF, the track organization says if she take it, she can never run again. They told her in the hospital that, Gail, we got to take your feet. We have to amputate her feet. At that point, she was, went from having no will, and God spoke to her. And she found something inside of her that allowed her to begin to believe in herself. Regardless of the situation, she said, I will not allow this to defeat me. She began to realize that she had to get her life in order again. She began to realize that she has to develop the willpower to overcome the difficulty. Her coach, who coached her through college, came over her house. And she began to lift newspapers, phone books, to gather strength within her. She began to lift and to lift to the point where she was able to walk. And he took her to a track. And he says, Gail, can you run? She focused on the 1992 Olympics. And she said, that, that's my target goal. And she took one step. And he asked her, can you take another step? And she said, I couldn't. He said, can you take another inch? And she took an inch. And he took her inch by inch to the point where she was able to eventually begin to walk on that track. She began to the point where she was able to run on that track. Her willpower increased. And so did her vibrational frequency. Others saw the change because she went from a person without will to the power of will. And that executive faculty kicked in. And before you know it, she was running. In 1992, she won the 100-meters race in the Olympics. And she went on to win it again in 1998. Here was a woman who understood that this energy was really a Christ energy. History never tells you her story, how she failed to give up, how she was able to find that Christ presence within, her, within herself. You see, that story about Gail Devers is our story in our society. We've been beaten up. We've been told we will never get up. We've been told that we've lost the ability to save this planet. We've been told that mankind is destined to destroy itself. But somewhere along the line, somewhere, there has to be those individuals who realize that there's a presence of God inside of us that is so great. Somewhere, there has to be those individuals who know that this Christ impulse is not dead within me. Somewhere we have to know right now that we can become a light encoded energy that is continuously coming into our being, coming into the atmosphere to assist us to accomplish this great task. 
You see, we've been called for this moment right here. Those of us who know it will feel it. There'll be a stirring of an energy inside of you that will resonate from your heart. And this total commitment of will of the almighty indwelling God. A great will and intention to be one who will transform oneself and thereby transforming the world. You see, you have to make a decision if you're part of that group. You have to make a decision if you're willing to make that sacrifice. To let go of worry and doubt and fear and begin to believe in the Almighty again. Not something out there, but something right here. You have to have the courage to face the darkness and be transformed and the willingness to transform the darkness into light. You have to have the discipline, the discipline to accomplish, to accomplish your transformation and activation of the Christ principle. Charles Fillmore knew it. Emily Cady knew it. Greg Braden talks about it. Michael Beckwith shouted out from L.A. You are saying it right here. And now we have to go farther. And now we have to reach our community. We have to link up with those around us. Because we have to know that there are millions who are encoded to become the living Christ. And to experience the holy birth of the activation of the sacred seals, those chakras that's in your body. The world has been praying for the Christ within you to awaken. And now you have the chance to activate that vibrational frequency and heal the world, creating right here a heaven on earth. It is ours to do. It is our responsibility. The world is waiting on us right now. God bless you.